Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome back to Strange Mind 6. I'm your host, Ruby, and today we are going to be getting back into So Much for Love, How I Survived a Toxic Relationship by Sophie Lambda. And before we begin, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already, and definitely if you haven't heard the first video of this story, please go to my channel and it'll be there under graphic novels. But other than that, let's grab a drink grab a snack, or sit back, relax, and let's get to it. You look so happy. I've never seen you like this, girl. No, really. You're glowing. You're funny. You look fulfilled. You look like your Pragers with eight buns in the oven or something. Oh, stop it. <laughs> You know, I've never felt like this before. It's wild. I've been swimming in a sea of happiness for four months. Oops, I'm sorry. No worries. I'll go get a drink. Hey, Gypsy. Look, Olivia's inviting us over for drinks tomorrow. Should we go? I don't know. I bet Louise will be there. She's an attention whore. A total idiot. She might make you feel uncomfortable. You'll get embarrassed, so I'd rather not. Oh, okay, I understand. I'll just tell her no then. And it starts. A few drinks later. Come join us, we're talking to strangers. Ben, my bestie. Yoo-hoo, hello. Hello, drunk people. Check out the tits on that little whore. And we're done joking around with people in the street. What's going on? Just two idiots outside. That's all. I closed the window and they left. Since when do you hit on guys in the street, huh? What? I wasn't hitting on anyone. We were just goofing off at the window. These two idiots were rude and I closed the window. End of story. Yeah, right. And with that, he continued with the party, ignoring her. Hey, wait for me. What the hell is your problem? I'm just scared you'll meet someone else and leave me. And that's how it'll end. What? But, but Chipster, look at us. You think chipmunks like us grow on trees? We are shining lights. We light up the whole city. Yeah, well, Louise used to say the same exact thing. And then she just up and left me for another guy she had been banging for months. She betrayed me. I've opened my heart to you. But I'm scared she dumped me at the worst possible time of my life. Just when I thought it was true love, she bailed. Come on, let's grab a cab. Eight months ago, the text. Me and my girlfriend split up. Mutual decision, it was tough, but I've decided to be happy without her. Power off. Morning, Chipster. How'd you sleep? Fine. I'm sorry about last night. I've never freaked out like that before. I don't get it. Must have been the booze. Uh, okay. Louise really did a number on me. You know, I was crazy about her. She was the love of my life. 
and she cheated on me for months. I didn't suspect the thing. I gave her everything. It was awful. And I love you even more. If that's even possible, I love you with my heart and mind. I love you with every part of me. Sometimes I cry at the thought of losing you. I couldn't bear it. I can't promise you forever. We're not that stupid. But I can tell you one thing. I'll never lie to you. I have my flaws, most definitely. But I will never lie to you. Okay, okay. How about we work outside? And then we go see a movie tonight. Sold. You're my favorite human. Then they go to the movie theaters, make jokes and laugh. Ugh, what a pair of losers. Hey, Chip. Chip? Yes? You keep pics of us to yourself, right? You don't post them on Instagram? Um, no, why? I don't like showing up on social media, you know? Given my job. Don't worry, I get it. I don't give a shit about social media. Okay, enjoy the movie, Chippy. The next day, back home from Mont Beller. You get in okay, Chipmunk? I just got home right this minute. Oh, and I got confirmation from the movers. It's on, baby. Cool. What are you up to? I'm going to see Maud, work colleague. I think you know her. A little. We follow each other on Instagram. I'm helping her with her screenplay. I don't really like working with her, but whatever. It pays well. Let's talk later tonight, okay? Not too late. I love you, chipmunk. Sounds good. I gotta get to work. Love you. As she kept working and working, the time passed, and it got really late. Any news? No, and it's getting really late. I love Instagram. Can you click on that? It says you get a free phone if you click. No. Mod. 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 I don't like showing up on social media. I don't really like working with her. What the hell is he doing with Maud in 23 videos on Instagram? And why doesn't he do that with you? Why doesn't he play cat burglars with you? Why did he say he had to work when he was really goofing off in a hat store? Why doesn't he take you to try on funky hats? Why don't you bring it up? It's just Instagram. I'm not going to act all jealous. That's dumb. I hate that. It's not jealousy. He said one thing and then did the opposite. But whatever. Cry yourself to sleep and repress your feelings. That's a great plan. Brr, it's getting cold. Should have grabbed a blanket. One night, we he got invitations to open to the opening of a big play in Paris. All the actors were going for drinks afterwards. Not sure if you notice, but Louise is here. We'll just have to avoid her. It'll be fine. Really? Okay. I was really shy and introverted as a child. I'm a lot better now, but I still really hate attention. The thought of Louise possibly drawing attention to me in public was incredibly stressful. But for him, I could make the effort. I wasn't alone. Okay, it's gonna be fine.
as they introduce themselves to other actors. He then says hi to Louise. You could switch the bourbon, less of a hangover. I don't get it. Why are you alone at the bar when you were supposed to meet up with people and avoid his crazy ex? Oh, there you are. You want to get out of here? So why did you ditch me to go talk to Louise when we were supposed to be avoiding her? Is that why you've been acting weird? Well, duh. Well, that and the gallons of free champagne guzzled to forget. I work with some important people, you know, so I have to be civil and at least go say hi. Important people? Who do you think your ex is exactly? Lindsay Lohan? She came up to me. Anyways, listen, I wanted to tell you that you were great. If the roles had been reversed, she would have made a huge scene. You're way better than her and much smarter. Don't give in to petty jealousy. We're above that, okay? It's not worth fighting over. I probably didn't see her wave. Besides, it's his job to schmooze and mingle. Maybe she waved him over and I didn't see? And he didn't want to make a scene in front of his friends? I hate petty jealousy. Maybe he's right. He's a tortured soul and deep down he's a good person. He's just talk to her for a few minutes no big deal it was very brief yes she heard him but with time that'll pass we love each other enough I don't want to blow this I love you chipmunk you're an amazing girl she can't hold a candle to you uh, uh, okay Lindsay Lohan I panicked Winter arrived, and we went to spend Christmas with his family. I was dreading this a little. Meeting the parents isn't really my favorite thing. Hiya, kids. Right in time for bubbly. Welcome, Sophie. How was your trip? Give me your bag. I'll put it in my room. How about some white wine, a little sausage roll, fresh out of the oven? Not white, Claudine. Just popped open the bubbly. Mixing white and bubbly, I mean really. How about a glass, Sophie? Oh, stop it. We're not all as sophisticated as you, Gerard. Hi, Sophie. It's great to meet you. Jade, say hello to Uncle Marcus's lady. Come see something. Remember when Arnold was little? He was afraid of butterflies. Then, when I told him caterpillars were baby butterflies, he was afraid of those too. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't just me. Remember when Marcus ate a slug? That was just disgusting. <laughs> Cut it out! Everybody's always making fun of me in this stupid family, and I am freaking sick of it. Can I say something? Okay. The rest of our stay was fine. Despite that incident, I left with a basket full of local specialties and fun presents. Safe travels. Come back any time. Thank you for so much. Thank you so much for having me, Claudine. I'm so glad you're moving to Paris. You can look after Marcus. Um, sure, yeah, we're very happy. 
Here, take some water for the train. Text me when you get home, okay? Okay. Don't forget, I won't. What about you? Would you like a bottle of wine? For the train, Louise? Mom? Holy crap, she called you Louise. She must be so embarrassed. Just pretend you didn't hear. I'm so sorry, Chipmunk. I don't know why she called you that. No worries, these things happen. Especially since she didn't even know Louise. She never met my family. You're the only one who's been to see them. I don't bring too many people home. You know, the family circle is special. Hmm. So his mom mistakenly used the name of someone she never met. Huh. Strange. Sorry, but something's fishy here. This doesn't make sense. Why lie about it? Nah, you're being paranoid. Quit shutting me up like that. It drives me nuts. You're only in my subconscious, and I do what I want. Now zip it. It's freezing in here. Marcus took off for Bridges for a month on a film shoot, and I enjoyed, and I joined him for a weekend. It was amazing. He was staying in a five-star hotel, which was a major first for me. Sweet! I'm so glad you're here, Chipmunk. I don't know what I'd do without you. So, how's the shoot going? Do you like the crew? Yeah, we're having a lot of fun. I feel like I totally suck, but whatever. Don't say that, Chipster. You rock. There's this girl, Lisa. She's like 22, 23. Spoiled rich kid. I can't stand her. Oh, yeah? I mean, look at her Instagram. Shopping, Louis Vuitton, selfie with Carl L Lagerfeld, luxury hotel in Central Park, birthday party at the Ritz. The girl's only 20. It's a different world for sure. Yeah, but on top of that, she's as dumb as a doorknob. Hey, you want to go out for a waffle? As they go out, they get food. Look, Lisa posted another photo on Instagram. Uh-huh. Back to the hotel? Yeah. Oh my god, she's just posted another photo. Cool. Ridiculous. She posts in a fur coat on the steps of the Market Square. Wanna see? Inglorious Bastards is playing on TMC. Wanna watch it? Why aren't you answering me? Look, I'm not interested in that girl's life. Can we change the subject? Are you really that fucking jealous? Oh my god, you're pathetic. Why are you getting so upset? I didn't say anything. You need to understand I'm not the enemy, Marcus. Excuse me? Gulp? You drive me fucking nuts. How dare you talk to me like that? When I go on vacation with my best friend, it's not like this. It's nice and peaceful. It only gets fucked up with you. Why is that? Nobody has ever talked to me like that. Nobody! Do you hear me? As he punches the wall. And Sophie's in the corner. I'm going to bed. I know I'm supposed to keep my pie hole shut, but aren't things getting worse? Hey, you listening? 
I mean, look at yourself. You look like an old lady. This is not healthy, goddammit. I'm so tired. Wakey, wakey, chipmunk. You don't want to miss your train. Your cab's on the way. Um, let's wait outside. I don't want to run into others. Why not? Listen, um, Greg's room is next to mine. He heard your little fit of jealousy last night, and he texted me to ask why you were screaming like that. Uh, what? But I wasn't screaming. Not this again. It's over. Off you go. You're my chipmunk, and I love you. It'll be fine. Get home safe, and I'll see you in Montpelier. A screamer? Me? Well, maybe. And then all these negative thoughts kept popping up. How much do I owe you? No worries. Your friend paid me at the hotel. That guy's in love. Lucky you. <laughs> so, is this how I am? Is my self-awareness really this slow? Is my ability to see myself really that bad? Is my head buried in the sand up to my belly button? Did I really scream so loud? I woke up Greg and never even realized it? Oh honey, no. It's not even that. <sighs> and if that's the case, am I so out of touch with reality? So I'm crazy basically, batshit crazy. As she starts to cry and have a panic attack. So, panic attack in a photo booth at a train station in Belgium. It's crazy how a series of poor choices can spice up one's life story. Then we return to Montpellier as planned. She never told him about her meltdown. In the following days, he sent postcards. You have to admit, it's pretty cute, right? Besides, everybody has bad days. It happens. It'll be fine. Brain going under the rug. Ding dong. Hi, Chip Chip. As they continue, they eat together, smoke together, work together. You can sweep anything you want under the rug, but it will still be a rug with a bunch of crap under it. She can't sleep, so she heads outside as Marcus's phone is on the table. You should take a peek. No, snooping around is pathetic. I don't want to be that person. You haven't slept in weeks. Your stomach hurts. You constantly have the squirts. Please, save us some time and look at the damn phone. Alcohol teddy bear, one. Moral values, zero. Badoom. She starts crying. What? What are you freaking kidding me? You gonna let him sleep? You want a scene right here and now? In the middle of the night? Like in brudges? I feel so tired. So tired. Freaking grotto of denial.
Did you sleep out here, Chip? Yeah, I'll make coffee. I couldn't sleep last night. So I got up, had a glass of water, and looked through your phone. That's why I slept on the couch. What did you see? What do you mean? What did I... What did you see? You know what I saw, don't you? Tell me what you saw. You're gonna make me say it? Yup. For all you know, you're bluffing and this is just testing me. There were messages to Olivia where you told her you cheated on me in Bridges and messages from some Claire chick saying she wants you while you're on the train to Montpelier and messages from some Morgan chick who said she'd love another night with you for old time's sake. There was a Julia, a Karma, a Virgin. Who are all these girls? And start the stopwatch. That was in f fucking brudges. Brudges! I was feeling lonely because of you and your jealousy. So sad and lonely I wanted to die. You asked me to promise you not to lie a thousand times and then you do this I need an explanation I didn't do anything wrong okay as he punches the wall hmm it's gonna be hard to talk to him now that he's possessed by the devil hey that's my Sunday vodka will you please stop whatever I'm just worthless anyways a worthless piece of shit Calm down. It's okay. Let's talk. A new record. Less than five minutes to mess with your head. You flipped like a batch of Sunday pancakes. Thanks for stopping me from doing something stupid. I'm so sorry. I just felt guilty. I love you. This sucks. It'll be fine, don't worry. I'll see you for the big move. You're supposed to be moving in a week, I know. Initially, we're supposed to be living together. But since Marcus never helped during the apartment search, I decided to live alone, but near his place. On the moving day, my movers were a no-show. At which point, Marcus offered to do the job himself. But we called in some reinforcements anyways. In Paris, we didn't finish until 2 a.m. in the rain. It was hell, and we had to return the truck early in the morning. Oh man, what a night. I'm exhausted. Well, of course we're exhausted. You insisted on us doing it all ourselves. What? But you, you were the one who offered. Are you fucking kidding me? Is it my fault your movers are flakes? Is it my fault you're exhausted when I do everything for you? As he speeds the truck. You always screw up everything. Hi. Um, you okay? You look like crap. This is not getting any better. Message from Marcus. Let's face it, we don't get along. What are you trying to tell me? I'm not making any decisions later. I don't get it. What decision? I'm switching to airplane mode. Ciao. I'm so tired. You're going to his place? Yep. But why? Because I love him. I want to see that great guy I met again. The adorable guy who gave me Al Capone. I'm sure that meltdown in the truck was just an isolated case. He won't do it again. I need to talk to him. 
Hi Chip Chip, how are you? Awesome. Once again, it's easier to just go along with things and not say anything so as not to rock the boat. While believing that a short moment of joy will magically turn into a long-term happiness. Tisk humans, I tell you. Morning, Chipster. How'd you sleep? Hey, can I get an answer? I'm so fucking sick of you constantly criticizing me. I'm sick of chicks who spend all their time criticizing me. Screw all of you. Screw you in the ass. Screw all of you. Do you hear me? Ah, Licky. He's at it again, and it's getting worse. Who would have thunk? Not to mention that it's the death of eloquent language. You need us to leave. Save yourself. This is too much. You didn't do anything. You'll die here if you stay. You know what? Screw you too. You're nuts. Look at yourself. You're crazy. I can't do this anymore. And this belongs to me. Hey, you okay, girl? I'm fine. I'm not crazy. You comfy here with all these boxes? Your life sure does suck. I can't tell if I'm crazy or not. I mean, maybe this is what crazy is. If you leave this guy, I promise to quit the booze. Leave him. But we're so happy. The next morning. I need to see you. Meet me for lunch at Cactus at 12.30. I was expecting a breakup, an awkward, serious conversation about our relationship and how moving here was a mistake. I was expecting tears and a candid and a sad rejection. It seemed inevitable. But then, hi sweet Chip Chip, what's up? How does he do it? How does he look so radiant when you look like a fish out of water did you unpack your boxes um no i slept listen we need to talk about what happened about your reactions your fits the violence i can't take it it's not normal we can talk about it if you want chip chip but i'm not really sure what to say these outbursts of mine started with you Ready to order? May I suggest this beautiful Beretta model served on a bed of ammo. Boom. Ma'am? Um, yes, I'll have soda and a lime, please. Say something. Bang your fist. Yell at him. For all I know, he's right, and I provoke this. How can I prove otherwise? Besides, I don't want to make a scene on the restaurant patio. How far will women go to be polite? You're the problem. Hello, anyone in there? You really need to do something. You can't talk to him. You can't get upset anymore. You can't even feel things normally anymore. You used to cry over diaper commercials. And not even diapers for babies. No, diapers for seniors. Seniors! You know what? I think I like the freezing grotto better. And you know what? If you're going to keep sending me there, I'll stay there forever. You'll be all alone. No conscience. Just an empty shell. There won't be any coming back from this, you know? You'll fill your life up with nothing. 
You'll collect tacky crystal figurines, thimbles with names on cities of them. That's what will happen after you've been completely forgotten about. I'm gonna leave him. Either way, you never listen to me. I'm just- hold on, what did you say? I love him to death, but I can't go on. I have to leave him. Have you seen how he reacts lately when you disagree with him? Imagine if you tell him you're leaving. Oh shit. Do it from afar. I can't do that. He tried to knock back a whole bottle of vodka on a Sunday morning. He punched himself in the face when you asked him to say good morning back to you. And meanwhile, you look like total shit. You really want me to go down the list? The alcoholic teddy bear was right. The time had come. Marcus's reaction, as you can probably guess at this point, in the story was not calm, especially since he was on a film shoot far away. I thought you loved me, so you're the liar. Besides, I didn't cheat on you. I kissed a girl while doing coke. I snorted so much blow. I could have blinked. Keep pissing me off like this and watch out. Die, you fucking bitch. Why do you wait for me to go on my shoe, huh? Why did you do this over the phone? What bullshit. You're talking like you're a battered woman. All that's missing are the bruises. I am not violent. You're just hysterical. Say what you will. Nothing excuses the cheating, the lies, and punching yourself in the face. You're making it up. If you tell anyone, I'll kill myself. And to think I was doing freaking fine before all this. The following weeks weren't a pretty sight. I was a zombie. Oh shit. I cried at the drop of a hat. Sometimes I'd wake up suddenly gasping for air and already crying. I slept all the time to avoid my thoughts. I couldn't work, couldn't go out, couldn't answer the phone. And in terms of nutrition, it was a disaster. I'm a girl who loves her food yet I hardly ate anything for weeks. I was shrinking by the day. You've been trying to lose that for five years, and now in three weeks, boom, gone. When I did eat, it was either chocolate croissants, regular croissants, or Kinder Pingu. Hey, leave some for me. And my body sure did make me pay for it. I have company eight times a day now. I'm so happy, the toilet says. I was in total regression and destruction mode over which I had no control. I sank back into my worst habits times 1,000. And meanwhile, He kept playing with me, like I was his piñata. With each murderous word, each lie, I sank deeper and deeper. Am I nuts or what? What the hell is this? What am I missing? Damn it, I can't go on. I'm at a loss. He's driving me nuts, I swear. He's gonna kill me. All right, this is it. I'm calling my gang of imaginary teddy bears, and we're taking that punk out. Hoping to locate some shred of truth 
in his behavior or his words, I would spend hours poring over his social media posts. My phone was becoming a veritable instrument of mental torture. I spent all my time blocking and then unblocking him. I had become the worst version of myself. I wanted to leave him, but I needed to understand. My phone was all I had to decipher his behavior. It was becoming an obsession. I was living with a ghost, with his ghost. He had taken up every inch of my space. Or rather, I had conceded it to him. I know you're exhausted. You feel like you've lost your heart, your brain, your kneecaps. You think you'll never recover, but you have to get at least out there. Come on, girlfriend. I tried, but nothing interested me. And everywhere I went, oh, I saw him. I thought that guy over there was Marcus. He looks just like him. Dude, he's got a mullet. I would never get myself all worked up over total strangers. It was nuts. So, oh, so you know Marcus? Um, yeah. I've met him a few times. That guy is adorable. So sweet. He's a real teddy bear. Sweet? Sweet? Is that the word? Is that how the world sees him? They need to know the truth. I need to shout it to everybody. I can't go on. Yes, he is nice. Every lie brought me a little closer to him when I was trying my damnedest to get away from him. It was like he... It was like he had tentacles. The frustration of knowing how fake and toxic he was while hearing how much everybody loved him, thanks to the amazing act he put on in public, was unbearable. He never left my realm. Am I seeing things? And that, my dear friends, is where we are going to leave it for now. Tune in to the next video to hear how this continues. This has been Ruby, signing off, my dear, dear friends.